virus that came from China, and he's not the only one. Some people come to the centre claiming they... Hello there. Last week we had the first year anniversary of the Ibuari Second Mandate in focus. Next week it will be the first official celebration of Democracy Day on that politically significant date, June 12th. In between these two commemorations is this week, which offers a poignant reflection of Nigeria the state, its political reality, its travails, and the struggle to galvanize itself into true wealth social stability, economic buoyancy, justice, fair play, equity, and the all-important trust between the leaders and the led. This is a delicate and sensitive precinct which, where the wishes of the uh, people are properly conveyed and acted upon uh, for the development of society. This is governance in a nutshell. Today on Political Update, we will probe a bit further and interrogate the concept of true representation. We'll also give you a peep at the happenings in the political parties and stories of governance at the grassroots level. I am Fisai Ogunfui. Welcome. <music> Vice President Yemi Oshibaju led the members of the Economic Sustainability Committee in an interaction with the leadership of the National Assembly on the draft sustainability plan ahead of its submission to the President. Our Njidi Unifadi brings us up to speed on this plan. The virtual meeting, unquote, from the presidential villa was attended by the Senate President, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and several other principal officers of the National Assembly. As Vice President Yemi Oshimbaji explained, the Economic Sustainability Committee called the meeting to consult with the National Assembly before the committee's report is submitted to Mr. President. Present members of the National Assembly, the Vice President, noted that the President had always commended the good working relationship between the executive arm of the federal government and the current National Assembly. He added that it is very clear that COVID-19 has presented the country with an enormous economic challenge and also an opportunity. Both the Senate President and the Speaker welcomed the plan and commended the President and the Vice President for calling the meeting to enable the legislative arm of government to review the plan and make comments in the State House. The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 has decried a steady rise in maternal and child mortality in the country, attributing the trend to disruption of essential services in the health sector due to the coronavirus pandemic. The PTF lamented that the fear of COVID-19 among health workers is leading to more avoidable deaths. We have also seen life-saving maternal, newborn and child health, health, health services, routine vaccinations, access to care for chronic conditions such as HIV and other treatments not being delivered in our hospitals. And uh, people need to be able to access care. New criteria for discharging confirmed cases of COVID-19 were announced. If you are symptomatic, you can be discharged if you have had three days without symptoms, in addition to at least 10 days of symptoms. If you are asymptomatic, we can discharge you. You can be discharged 14 days after your first PCR positive test. So we no longer have to wait for a negative test to discharge. You can be discharged 14 days after your first positive with confidence that you can go home, that you're no longer infective and you're not at risk to, you're not putting your family, your friends or anyone else at risk if you're asymptomatic. The task force, however, advises against self-medication for COVID-19. WHO continues to emphasize there is still no evidence that hydroxychloroquine or any other drug is effective in treating or preventing COVID-19. States and local governments are urged to take ownership of managing the pandemic in their domains. State oversight of this phase of the response is very critical. The response needs to be decentralized to the local government level 
identifying high burden local governments to rapidly trace, test, and treat cases. The daily epidemic of, of confirmed cases shows a consistently rising trajectory with corresponding increase in fatalities. The task force emphasized that it is not a procurement body and does not award contracts, urging the public to beware of fraudsters. And now to our discussion, a research by the Matthias Wessel Tromberg uh, in the uh, Legislative Studies Quarterly posits that uh, legislative responsiveness to constituent demands is integral to the concept of representation. The theoretical model suggests that the district demands for legislative resources is determined by the district's relative deprivation of such resources. Legislators also have an electoral incentive to district demand due to the inherent uh, political credits. Today on Political Update, we have a Honorable Reverend Francis Ejirogene Waive. He is, a member represent, is the member representing uh, Ugeli North, Ugeli South, and Udu Federal Constituency of Delta State. Thank you for joining us on Political Update. It's my pleasure. Uh, being a Reverend and um, an Honorable Member means that uh, you are sensitive to the expectations of the people, both physical and celestial. Of course, and uh, throughout my pastoral ministry, social work was an integral part to be able to reach people at the level of need and uh, bring them to the Lord. And now tell us a bit about your experiences, especially during the lockdown, and uh, your sensitive contributions in this direction, especially uh, in your constituency. Now that, of course, it's been eased gradually, but at the uh, height of it all, uh, what was your interaction like with uh, your constituents? Yeah, my people, the, the good people of Ugele North, Ugele South, and Udu of Delta State, they went through the challenges that every other uh, person in this country, and indeed the world, because the world wide pandemic, uh, they went through the same thing, be it uh, economic, uh, security wise, uh, health wise, they went through the same thing during this period of the, of the lockdown. Uh, economic challenges were there, people, especially for those who earn their living per day, uh, it was very difficult uh, to survive. And uh, uh, we are to intervene in several ways. Uh, first, uh, the National Assembly, we donated our salaries for two months, uh, that's on a national level. Then at uh, an individual level, I personally made donations of uh, foodstuffs, palliatives, to uh, vulnerable women in the three local government areas, uh, costing me quite a lot. And also I made donations to each of the local government councils because each of them had their own uh, palliative committee, as it were. And a structure. A structure. So uh, yeah. I you know, collaborated with the chairman, made a donation there, uh, and on and on, that's what we did. Uh, and uh, hoping that uh, God, in his mercies, has kept our people. There are a few cases uh, in our constituency, and uh, we've also had to uh, had talks with our people to ensure that they observe the protocol so that we don't experience a hike, you know, through community transmission. And uh, so far, so good, it's been manageable. All right, let's uh, look at it from the legislative perspective now. Uh, have you been part of any, uh, you know, perhaps uh, legislative concept uh, to perhaps, you know, adjust to this new normal and perhaps speed up uh, the healing processes in terms of uh, uh, economy, in terms of even uh, general social welfare of the people. Are, are you part of some discussions uh, in this? Right? Because uh, life generally won't be like we'll, it was we'll before be same, uh, right. this pandemic. Yeah, uh, but you recall that the House of Representatives was at the forefront of the uh, of the push for uh, stimulus for our people. In fact. There was a stimulus bill that passed in the House, and credit to uh, uh, Right Honorable Speaker, uh, uh, His Excellency Femi Bajabia Miller, who, uh, among others, initiated this uh, bill, and which we are pleased to have uh, passed and for the benefit of our people. There is also the, the budget that we are currently uh, passing the revision, and by Tuesday, we'll be in plenary again, perhaps we'll be able to uh, do the third reading. Last Tuesday, we were able to do a lot of work on it, the second reading, and currently at the committee uh, level, just to ensure that the impact on our people and on the economy of the country is uh, manageable, where the price of uh, crude oil has been uh, 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 re revised downward, uh, 
the exchange rate, uh, the uh, number of uh, barrel produced per day, and all of that. And then looking into the nitty gritty of the budget, the allocation to various uh, sectors. Uh, for example, money has also been voted for the PTF for the COVID 19 uh, drive. And then there's the, um, I would like to say, popular infectious diseases uh, bill, which people didn't quite understand. And there was this scare that came around the country. Uh, we have to slow down, but it's a necessary bill because... Then perhaps you need to uh, also discuss with your consultants to explain oh, and, yes. uh, you know, educate uh, Nigerians. Let's uh, uh, move on slightly. I will st perhaps still come back in the course of the because I have a few uh, things I want us to go through uh, in the uh, process. Uh, if you remember, uh, you know, you are part of, you are, in, uh, you know, are from Delta State, of course, out of the APC, meaning that, you know, you are in the minority in that level. But looking at the concept of democracy generally, because uh, in a few short days, we will be celebrating our first official democracy day. I, do you think, in all this that you've said, we are maturing as, uh, as a country in terms of our democratic values? Oh, sure. I believe we are maturing. There was a day when this country was tending towards a one-party system. We've gone far beyond that. That's an evidence of maturity. And then the fact that we have been here for 21 years and still counting without an interruption, it means that we're maturing. And then democratic principles are gradually being imbibed. Look at the law coming up and people are able to express their opinion, people are able to talk. Previously, there will be a decree to silence everybody. So you find that the length of time it has taken and the things that are happening, you find that our democracy is maturing. And look at me, for example, I, I could go into the process and win an election without anything attached. It shows that the space, the democratic space has been opened and we are making progress. It may not be as fast as we want it, it may not be, we are not there yet, but we definitely are making progress and this country can but only be better. Being, being a reverend gentleman, you, could, you were able to uh, read uh, the science properly in the spiritual realm. Let's move on very quickly. <laughs> Activities of gathering speed at the APC National Secretariat ahead of the governorship elections in Edo, Edo and Undo states. Uh, aspirant from Edo state, this uh, week trooped to the party's headquarters in Abuja to fulfill the pre-election requirements, as we hear from Salu Abdullahi, who was at the APC Secretariat. Collection and submission of expression of interest and nomination forms by aspirants from Edo State is one of the major activities that broke the silence at the APC National Secretariat after the easing of lockdown as a result of COVID-19 pandemic in the Federal Capital Territory. Some of the aspirants, including Governor Godwin Obaseki, who is seeking re-election on the party's platform, spoke to journalists about their ambition and expectations ahead of the exercise. And the reason is simple. Over the last three and almost three and a half years, we have undertaken major, major transformational reforms in Edo State. Four years is not enough to crystallize all these reforms. And we're all witnesses in, in Nigeria to how reforms, genuine reforms, have been truncated. So another four years will give me that opportunity to consolidate on what we have done. And that is the promise of APC, the All Progressive Congress. The governor we need in Edo State today is a governor that will uh, dedicate part of the budget to fight insecurity. Insecurity uh, give birth to so many other things. Whereas security of life and property we give rise to positive things. As somebody that was aspiring, it was left for National Working Committee to make that decision. If they want us to do it direct, so be it. If they want us to do direct, so be it. And I have listened to the arguments to and fro. And what I find ridiculous is people trying to say that because of COVID-19, indirect will be better. I've always had a passion to work for my people in Edo State. And seeing the way the state is, what the state needs right now, it's a consolidation on the gains so far achieved by the APC government in that state. 
Six aspirants expressed interest to participate in the Edo APC governorship primary election scheduled to hold on the 22nd June 2020. I will be giving you updates as those events unfold uh, in uh, all the parties and uh, of course we'll also be there to give you this, some of these events live as well. The chairman and the councillors elect to emerge winners in the last week local government polls in Cross River State have been have received their certificates of return. The new Helmsman promise to deliver effective governance at the grassroots which is the closest uh, government to the people. Achibong Basse was there for political update. The epoch making event is a call to service for the advancement of democracy in the third tier of government ensuring that dividends of democracy get to the grassroots was part of the charges delivered to the chairman elect by the chairman cross river state independent electoral commission dr mike ushir one prominent feature of the administration at the third tier of governance is a pledge to harness the natural resources available in different local government areas for the growth of these areas and its people. Kotokpani is a very big local government and I know that will generate job opportunity for loyalty to the people and deliverance in governance. I will expect effective representation. As a local government chairman, we will attract too many dividends of democracy to my people. It was another time for the chairman elect to take their oath of allegiance in the presence of the state governor, Ben Ayadi. <laughs> The expectations from the people are high, especially with the return of democratically elected councils after seven years in Cross River State. Two issues from there, seven years before mm. uh, we got to this point, and then at least we saw some women emerging in those local government areas. Yeah, that's uh, very commendable that some women uh, emerge and that uh, they're returning back to uh, elective uh, uh, local government councils. But it's sad that we've lost seven years. That's sad, and it shouldn't be so anywhere in this country. Democracy must be allowed to mature and deepen and such that our people will get the benefits, the dividend of democracy. All right, moving on now very quickly, like we were going to uh, discuss uh, you know, earlier in the program. You are a reverend gentleman. Uh, government, as we, uh, through these announcements on COVID-19 guidelines of, uh, and the ease of lockdown, I hope we are opening uh, the worship centers, of course, at least on the Fridays and uh, Sundays. This is good for morale. Yeah, uh, it's a good development, particularly with Nigerians being people who are very religious. Uh, and myself, I'm a Christian, I'm a born-again Christian, I'm a pastor, and I'm, I'm glad that this has uh, happened. But we must observe the protocol uh, as uh, 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 given to us by PTF, the Presidential Tax Force, because uh, it's for our own good. So every Nigerian who is going back to the place of worship should ensure their social distancing, uh, sanitizers are used, hands are washed, and all of that, the, the length of time. You know, people try to compare the place of worship with the market, forgetting that the market is an open space. But the, the places of worship are usually in concealed environments, and it's a little more risky than the, you know, the open space. So it's good that we can go back to worship, we can go back to pray, but we should observe those protocols for our own good and for our own safety and our own livelihood. All right, let's move on very quickly. And what has uh, come out of uh, you know uh, the news headlines in the past few days or perhaps uh, in the past week has been gender-based violence uh, recurring in different parts of the country. In terms of legislation, are you part of those agitating or at least uh, meeting to discuss how we can begin to put uh, you know tougher legislations in place to discourage this trend? 
Yes, uh, a good question. The, it's been very disturbing what has been happening uh, across the country in terms of rapes and all of that, and very condemnable act. Uh, yesterday in plenary, we spent over two hours at the House discussing this uh, issue, and uh, many uh, points were made, and uh, uh, I remember when we talked about uh, the children out of school, I, one of the amendments I brought was that the Child Rights Act should be uh, domesticated in all the states of the country as one way of uh, solving this problem. Another issue we, that came up yesterday was the boy child. Many of the boys grew, the um, attention has been focused on the girl child, to the detriment of the boy child. So we now have a situation where boys grow up without that training, without that mentoring. When I was growing up, my father told me to take off my sisters, take off my mother, be nice to them, protect them. But I don't think that is available today when everybody's running uh, to get more money, more money. So there need to be that attention to the boy child. But for legislation, we have uh, made some proposals, and in the next, uh, the, uh, the right honorable speaker has uh, delegated committees that are in charge of those areas to come up with something. And in the coming weeks, I'm sure uh, Nigerians will see a new legislation. Although there are laws already, uh, rape is a crime under the criminal code and several other laws. But as we move ahead, we will need to strengthen those laws and be sure that implementation is perfect and stigmatization is, is you know, removed from the, the game because that's why this thing can keep going on. And for what is happening today, one worries whether there is any kind of organized crime behind it. Because it's happening in Benin, in, in uh, Kogi, in the different parts of the country. So you want to wonder, so there might be a need for uh, investigation to find out whether there's anything behind this upsurge that we're experiencing today. Very sad day. Let's, uh, finally, let's uh, look at it from the legislative perspective. I asked you if we were maturing. Uh, in terms of uh, the synergy between the three arms of government, where have we gotten to? as we close. Yeah, uh, we're maturing. The, we have a National Assembly today that is um, uh, uh, checkmating the executive, but doing it in a constitutional way. For example, in the past, the, the country suffered when budgets could not be passed, projects could not be implemented. It was the country that suffered. But what we have done today is that we engage the executive. I'll give you an example of the 22 billion loan we just did. The House kept that in for about four or five months and was they were talking with the executive. Uh, and they, they needed to make sure that there is a spread across the country. The southeast, the northeast, every part of the country must benefit. And we had to put that clause in before we passed it uh, last Tuesday. That's the kind of synergy. It's different from when we just come and say, now we are going to fight you. No, the, what the constitution envisaged was for the legislature to do this kind of thing that we are doing presently for the uh, good of the country. That's the thing, the interest of the common man on the street. I want to thank you very much for coming. That has been Political Update. Uh, uh, we've had uh, Reverend Francis Ejirogene Waive, uh, member representing Uweli North, Uweli South, and Udu Federal Constituency. Of course, he is a lawmaker and also uh, a man of God, uh, skillfully uh, you know, juggling uh, both uh, Flares. Let's move on. That's how we end our program today. We will, of course, uh, return, God willing, on Tuesday. And next week is a bumper package uh, throughout the week because it will be uh, June 12th, that iconic date in Nigeria's history. My name is Fisa Ogunfi. Thank you for staying tuned. All the best. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and keep it hooked on the Nigerian Television Authority where we give you the very best of news, reviews, previews, and interviews. Bye-bye now.